Well, hello, everybody, and happy Monday. I am so delighted that you have tuned in with me today. It's always great that you join us on Act 3, whether you're listening to us on Spotify, whether you're listening to us on iHeartRadio or on Shaw Spotlight. But today, of course, the main recording always comes from CHLY 101.7 FM, the greatest station on Vancouver Island. And if you're listening from the Sunshine Coast, welcome to the program as well. On today's program, I have a very special guest. Her name is Nanette Moss. Nanette is an artist in our community, and she's got some interesting things to share with us. I do want to preface the beginning of this uh, conversation, noting that she has a hearing impediment. And at times, we may have to repeat or change, or we may have breakup within the transmission itself. Just come along for the ride, just like any other Zoom broadcast. You never know what's going to happen. Well, we're really, really glad that you've tuned in. Nanette, welcome to the program. I'm so glad you're here. I am glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. You know, I when I learned that you were a local artist, I was already excited because I know that every community is built upon the beauty that surrounds them and it comes from great artists. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the craft, you know, some of the things that you've really enjoyed about art. Fill us in. All right, this is such a rich question. We could go in many directions, but so what I will start with is, uh, like many people started doing art when I was quite young. Um, and I, one of the pivotal moments was um, just after high school, I did my first uh, mural in, um, in that, what's now is an iconic mural alley. Uh, from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, oh, it's wow. Graffiti Alley. Wow. And so that um, the mural was meaningful to me because at the time I was really getting into meditation, self reflection, psychology, etc. And so the mural was attempting to get across some of my ideas. So then um, around the same time some of my friends had this is my crossover from art into performance art and this is all part of the story i hope it's okay it's a bit about that's perfectly wonderful go story ahead here um so some of my friends had a string quintet and they were going to do a show where they wanted uh me to paint in the backdrop while they performed and they the only guideline was it's about creation and whatever that means to you. And so it, it was a, it was an abstract painting. It was huge. It was house paint. It was, I was getting really into it. And then um, I noticed uh, that the, the audience was starting to maybe drift a little bit. And I think the next group that was supposed to come on, Mr. Q. So it, it was dragging a little bit and I thought, oh, what am I gonna do? I have to help perk the energy back up, you know? And so yes. I, um, I, also was very into dance and performance and so I started uh, painting myself into the backdrop and dancing and it was it was such an an amazing experience it opened me up um new levels uh new ideas and uh, I remember afterwards riding my bike home covered with paint paint my hair it was, it was really funny but so um the, the performance part continued with making costumes and headdresses found objects and fabric and combining mythology and my own ideas from around the world in different uh, dance styles and so bringing us closer to the present time um, then i had hearing loss uh, pretty pretty quickly over the course of a year or two yeah. and um you know, it's it's probably a, there's so many side stories I could tell you. I'm trying not to get too sidetracked here, but, uh, <laughs> so. but it's important actually, though, to the story for people to understand because really, once you started going down this path, things mm -hmm. started to really explode. So don't be afraid to imbibe. Go ahead. All right. Well, so with the the hearing loss, and it did take some time to accept that that was happening that yes. I was having hearing loss and it wasn't just a matter of paying attention. Um, so I became more afraid of afraid of performing because I didn't want to miss cues and 
I didn't want to embarrass myself. Yeah. And uh, so it, my, and my self-esteem in general took a, a huge hit and it was harder for me to, uh, well, it's hard in a very practical sense to connect with people. If you're having trouble hearing them, people would, you'd find out a lot about people's true character by are they going to be patient and just repeat themselves? Are they going to make fun of you? You know, um, so this is this all kind of fed into who I am and uh, why I stepped away from performance and came back to 2D art um, with a newfound appreciation for the other senses besides hearing. So texture, color, shape, really expressive, you know, um, I also uh, really enjoy looking at the detail of things, uh, specifically mm -hmm. plants, um, looking closer at the details of things and trying to understand them as they are. And so art then now has become a way for me to slow down, to try to see things as they are, and also to look within and process what I'm feeling. Um, so now, um, the, the art that's going to be in the upcoming show, um, it combines, well, it's mostly inspired by, uh, plants and landscapes with abstract, expressive backgrounds. And Wonderful. you, you kind of go through a journey through the course of the show, because you can see, uh, over the course of a year, the style change, um, the approach change and, um, I, I describe more of the meaning behind each each piece, both in the title and on my website and in the uh, the audio tour, which I've recorded to be an interactive element of the show. Um, the meaning behind the art is is very important to me. It's yes, I want it to look pretty and have people feel a certain way, especially joy. I want them to feel joy when they look at the art. And I also want to show them a piece of myself, uh, what it means to me. Yeah. You know, art in itself is a very vulnerable place to be because you're putting your vision, your feeling, your emotion all tied up into it. And I can only suspect that that transition from going from, from your hearing changing would have really highlight, heightened so many of your other senses. At least that's what I hear. From your experience, did you really notice a difference in the way that you were seeing the world when one of the modalities of your senses was starting to diminish? Well, I definitely started to depend on my other senses more. Um, sure. So was there visual, one sense that you depended on more just out of curiosity sorry to move you on so quickly but was yeah. there one was there one of the um one of the the uh, senses that came on more sights sound smell where sorry not sound obviously you're losing your sound but of the others sight sight first and then yeah. texture also the tactile senses became really important and wow. i mean i i tend to be a pretty cerebral person and but also you know enjoy you know performance you're in your in your body and yeah. um so sight and uh tactile really became pronounced definitely and looking again without looking closer at things maybe that's part of it when you really look closer i don't try to capture the color and i really respond to colors now i it's more than i felt like i did in the past so when you, especially when you're talking about plants, I'm assuming obviously a lot of greens and the yellows that, and blues that are all part of such beautiful color. But do you actually, because, you know, I, I'm always curious about painters if they have a, a, a color that they prefer among other, with all the many different colors that there are, even within each singular color, there's many dimensions of those colors. Do you have a favorite? Oh my goodness. I love, I love color. I love, um, you know, probably my favorite color <laughs> is a teal, a blue green. Yes. And so often, I know this is going to happen throughout our conversation that you'll ask me what's, uh, give me an answer and I'll say, well, I have two answers. That's and, good. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's really me. So I like a blue green is my favorite color. Um, yeah. I, I have been going through phases of using different color combinations I've noticed. Yeah. And so I, I just completed a series that used a lot of warmer colors. Like I was really feeling this, this uh, dark blue and this uh, terracotta color 
with some buttery yellow and then the greens on top of that. And I'm going to be I'm moving toward the next project I work on. I'm going to be incorporating some different different color palette, but I'm not I haven't nailed it down yet. And that's kind of exciting to me because well, I love the green family, the just the earthy colors, but I need to always push myself and experiment and see what happens when I do this. And um, and I'm going to continue to do that with uh, yeah, with the color palette. I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to doing color mixing and color swatches and experimenting. It's that in itself is such a joyful meditation, just playing with color. I couldn't agree with you more. I love, I love the meditative side of painting it. you you get so into the textures and creation that, and you don't even, not necessarily even know what you're going to make in that moment, right? It's sort of the canvas begins to speak to you. At least that's what I hear. Have you found in your experience that you've looked at a blank, just a beautiful blank canvas and thought, oh my, my, what will I make here? Definitely. And um, sometimes I will have a plan in advance. Other times I'll just start to play. And um, what I would like to do I, is combining a couple of things here. So um, I one stage of the process that I really enjoy is playing with the texture. Again, with the yes. texture, uh, uh, having different mediums and different tools and spreaders and palette knives and things like that. And um, laying the canvas flat and just playing with texture for a while, just white is a wonderful way to, to start. And um, later I could go in and choose what, what colors am I, what color do I want to see now? What do mm -hmm. I want to look at now? What is this, what do I want to put in this little valley here? Or wouldn't it be cool if this ridge was gold? What would happen? What would it look like? And play around like that. That's one way I like to approach it. Um, another way would be if I know that I want to uh, feature feature a plant, then might start with the, the sketch, the composition, and draw down the canvas. And um, you know, I'm uh, I'll be totally honest because this is way more fun when we're totally honest. I've been trying different approaches, and so sometimes the work will look like. I, th I think it's obvious it's done by the same artist. Somebody else might think, oh, that style is so different. You know, that one is all abstract. And, and that one, you you don't use so much texture. It's more about um, more about the color and um, more about the, the plant, depiction of the plant. But for me, it's it all feeds in, all feeds into the bigger picture of um, playing with the texture, playing with the color, and then bring it all together. So moving forward, an approach I wanna play around with is do the abstract studies and canvases, play with all the texture that I love, swirl the colors however I want. I'm, obviously it's a little bit, there's a little bit more played into that, but, um, and then separately have botanical studies where I go to as much detail as I want, but just the drawing and then slowly, carefully, really take my time layering in the colors doing my best to to capture it. So one is pure imagination, spontaneous, whatever I want to do. And the other one is going for accuracy, but with a yeah. bit of playfulness and then bring them together. So it's not that the only thing that is legitimate is the last one where they come together. Each part is important and enjoyable to me and in, in different ways. Yeah, I think it's important as an artist to not get pigeonholes and not yes. feel like well, this is this is what's expected of me um or oh that that you know that painting doesn't really fit with your style so maybe you shouldn't show anyone it, yeah I yeah exactly right <laughs> yeah because and, and people often forget that art is an expression of self and it's an expression of not only our imagination but it's an expression of our spirit uh you know of the heart that we have and just I don't know about you I I am not a painter don't get me wrong I I dabble and my dabble is very very I'm not, I'm not even yeah what I know for sure though is that when I have a paintbrush in my hand and I tend to use um acrylic I find that you know for myself when I'm playing with it I never know what's going to come out and I don't care you know what I mean like I I want 
I want that whatever is going on inside to lose the stress, lose the rest of the things that are going on in the world. And like you said so beautifully a minute ago, that wonderful meditative process, right? It's like, I mean, yes, there may be a time when you're looking for the exact duplication of something and you're, you're trying to get the precision. And then on the other hand, that artistic playfulness is really why art is so spectacular and different for everybody. I, I really agree with uh, that. I got so excited about how I want to respond that I actually missed the last thing you said. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It, didn't, it wasn't important. So don't worry. <laughs> I am so excited that you, you brought up everything you just said, because the idea of dabbling in something, it's so important for us to have a creative outlet. And yes. I think that it is important for our mental health. It's important for our healing, for our processing our our thoughts about the world and i i also use acrylic and um found objects you know in different materials yeah. and i think that um whatever you do whatever dabbling whether it's spontaneous whether it's intentional whether it turns out the way you anticipate it or not um what's i mean it's it's great if you can gain skills and get something to do what you want it to or get something yeah. uh, to to come about that you're happy with um but that it's only it's not the end goal necessarily it doesn't have to be the only end goal you know yeah. um i think that the the process of making the art is um it can open up it can open up, open up many unexpected things um one of the things that it has done for me unexpectedly is it helped me recognize different ways that i was holding myself back in mm. life in general yes that was unexpected and uh, how that uh, an example would be so say you're going to you're going to start you think oh i want to i want to play do you hold yourself or oh, i should just speak to myself um am i allowed to use this color that i want to use am i allowed to use this material i want to play yeah. with is someone going to say i'm doing it wrong is it going to look bad Yes, um, I'm going to be embarrassed. And then by slowly encouraging myself to do what I feel like, follow my instincts, try it, see what happens. Then I gain confidence in my decision making abilities. I trust myself and I trust that everything's going to be okay, whether or not it turns out perfectly, I'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. And then that yeah. ripples out into the rest of life, creative problem solving and trusting ourselves. And I'm, I'm really glad that you brought that up because in a, doing a little bit of research on you before our program today, I went into your website and I read, or I'm not sure if it came from your website, but one of the, one of the postings was how I found fear with art. Is that, a, did I title that properly? How I, how I faced, faced fear with sorry, not found, yeah. faced, how I faced fear with art. Do you mind if we open that up a little bit? Because I know that, I mean, for so many people that I've talked to over the years, and I have a very, very good friend, Dan Elliott, who does the Winds of Change, huge uh, installation regarding reconciliation, First Nation communities and his journey going through that. You know, I noticed that it, it for him specifically, was a very inspiring way to take trauma and get that trauma out of the body, not only for himself, but for his community. So I was so inspired when I read how I faced fear with art, because you're kind of walking some parallel conversations and how you were able to actually see the world a lot differently by looking at yourself through the lens of a paintbrush. Yeah. Tell us more about that, if you will. Thank you for bringing that up and um, it's powerful work from very powerful you were just mentioning um and now i have not what i have not done i i have lived through some quite traumatic things that i have not tried to express in art and maybe i will eventually but mm -hmm. for well, i mean as far as um painting something difficult um for me the healing process has to do with finding my own strength yes and um I have painted a couple of, uh, well, one painting in particular that I did paint as a part of a healing process <clears throat> was called Milagro. And it's uh, an abstract heart uh, that came specifically from 
so it would have been a year ago, December, mm -hmm. that I was, I am also a healthcare worker and mm -hmm. I was, so I was at work and, uh, was feeling very strange and I started getting dizzy and, um, I, I passed out. Um, oh but my. I had this about me, like I knew I was going to pass out. And so I went to, uh, nurse's office, the head nurse's office and told them I felt dizzy. I sat down and passed out immediately. And they said, I, I turned gray and stopped breathing. And, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. So they, they got my heart going again and I came to, and they, they had me go to the emergency room after asking some questions. Um, but so I took about a month off and, um, during that time, during that recovery time, I, of course, knew this to say, I was, I was so afraid it was going to happen again. I mean, how fortunate was that, that I, I would have that experience when I was surrounded by nurses, you know, who knew what to do right near the hospital. Um, so I was so afraid that it would happen again when I was by myself and, you know, I kept getting dizzy spells, but not passing out again, thinking this, but, um, so during that time, I, I, I painted this painting of a heart because at that time we thought it was something going on with my heart. Um, so I painted this painting of the, of the heart every day, all day. That's what I did all day, every day. And so if, uh, the background is quite physically, uh, dark, it's kind of, um, multifaceted, you know, um, it's like in, inside your body, it's underground, you know, cause I was, I was thinking about death literally and the, and the earth and, inside my body, what's going on inside my body. And, um, but then the heart, like the part that was important for me to focus on was, was life and everything. I'm, I'm probably gonna start crying. That's okay. Um, That's okay. Everything. You're not the first person to cry on this program <laughs> by any means, by all means, it's safe. You're in a safe place. Real, right? um, yeah. Well, so it's huge. That's huge though. <laughs> like you find yourself in all fairness. I mean, it's huge. You find yourself at death's door really not knowing yeah. what happened and then trying to find a way to put things back together again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Huge. And, and so the, the painting itself, it was, uh, everything that made me think of, of life and joy and color. And I felt like to, to heal part of my healing process was I could not sit there being terrified. That's I could right. not. I needed to live every moment, squeeze out every possible bit of life I could. And so that's what I was trying to get across with the painting. And so like the heart, it's full of patterns of, of feathers and reptile and different cultural patterns from around the world and um, uh, symbolism within it. And so the, you know, and the, the two main veins in the heart, they're done in, in gold, like lightning and um, the whole, the whole thing is surrounded by, um, Okay, so out of, out of the the valves, for example, um, there were big bead chains in different colors coming out, and that was meant to symbolize uh, different cultures around the world have necklaces of protection with different colors of beads, and so it was, you know, it was, of course, it was like a, a prayer to not die every day, right? But no kidding. So that so that sense of transforming fear into determination and um to really live and be present that's that's what i'm referring to when i talk about face fear with art there are there are other paintings with different specific things i was adjusting internally um yeah. that have specific stories behind them but so the main purpose and that purpose but uh what i learned through that and how that is reflected in my art is to keep bringing it back to to joy and to yes. appreciating this life now so uh maybe it looks you know uh, i'm not painting about heavy topics i've lived through a lot of difficult things and i'm choosing to i am choosing to bring as much joy into my day as i can i mean you know be real deal with what needs to be dealt with see reality how it is and do the best we can to embrace life fully um this, your courage uh, is I lost track of what your, I was your courage say. to me <laughs> it should be applauded tenfold like i i 
you know, first of all, you're working in the health field, right? So that in itself has got so many positives and negatives with life and death happening in the same place a hundred times a day. You just, I mean, there's so much going on in that setting and, and in a health setting, whether or not you're in a hospital or whether you're working in private care or you're working at the doctor's office or whatever, the, the transition of people that are often struggling is very common, right? But there's always a silver lining. There's always a reason to get up in the morning and as you said, around the world, there are celebratory beads that people wear to protect them, to support them. And so what, a, what an, an incredible concept to bring this, this beautiful balance of life and vigor and determination and sustenance and respect to yourself and to those around you. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, Nanette. So thank you for sharing your story. We're not done yet, but we're going to take a moment just to get a bit of a station identification here. Um, I, cause I want to cry now too. And it's such a good way. Like I, I celebrate what it is we're talking about. I, so I get it. And I know our listeners do too. If you have just tuned in, you are listening to CHLY 101.7 FM right here in beautiful downtown Nanaimo. Spring is on the way. And so is this beautiful installation we're talking about today that's coming up. And we're going to talk to you about the details on how you can see this incredible artwork that we're talking with today with Nanette Moss. But I also want to talk to you about a couple of other things here in case you were not aware. Do remember that the coldest night of year is coming up on the 25th. We want to make sure that if you haven't participated in the I in crisis care society's uh, coldest night of the year i get tongue-tied when i say it please make sure you check them out online i know that they would appreciate your support for sure i also want to invite you to go to the wellness uh our uh, my colleague and dear friend teresa osman has wellness news she's putting on a huge wonderful trade show that very same day on february 25th saturday from 10 to 4 free of charge and if you should happen to find yourself with a ticket, by all means, make sure you take that ticket with you because there will be money that's donated to other parts of the community. So make sure you do your part and certainly uh, join in to see Teresa Osman at, at uh, the Wellness News and the Wellness uh, Show at the Convention Center downtown. Um, further to that, just a reminder, if you have not tuned in to Shaw Spotlight on Channel 4 and Channel 150, you're missing us on Act 3. We've got some great guests on there. Make sure that you tune in uh, when you can. And if not, please think about uh, liking and su subscribing to our YouTube station on act3mediaproductions.com. And you should be able to find all the links and things you need to be able to watch some of our previous shows, including the one we're doing right now. So I'm going to bring us back to the booth by the way before i fully do that don't forget you need to go grab a piece of paper and a pen you're going to want to know all about this you're going to need to write down the details pop them on your fridge you know you're going to want to go so nanette moss is in the booth with me in the zoom booth and we are talking about art and the healing and joyful things that not only does it bring to us uh, on every level of our lives, but is also a wonderful way to take you onto your next journey. So, Nanette, I, I was also really excited when I saw some of the pieces that you did. Um, I noticed that that the you did a lot of work around nature, around not nature as in mountains and skies and things like that, but plant life specifically. You know, um, we used to call them... Um, the snake plant or the, the, the mother tongue plant, um, mother-in-law plant, I think it was also called. I used to grab, I, I have one here actually in my home and, and which is where I record this, ladies and gentlemen, in case you didn't figure that out already, but I do have a snake plant in my house and I love the plant because it's got so many different textures in the leaves themselves. What inspired you to decide specifically to go into plant life in that way? Was it part of the COVID experience of being home with your plants or was there a bigger and more, more important conversation around that? Oh, both. And oh, good. <laughs> it was layered, but let's, let's start with the, the, the COVID period of time. And it sure. also um, connects to what you were saying earlier about working in healthcare and the, the difficulties there. So I was, plants have had a really huge part, they've been a big part of my life. Um, and um, when I was younger, I've worked on organic farms and plant nurseries. And um, I, I tried homesteading at one point, it was really hard. And especially when yes, I was younger, yes, it's very farms. hard. 
had to haul water and, and with a baby on my back, it was really hard. But um, so during, during that period of time, I would identify and transplant native plants and trade them with a plant nursery. And then, so I was planting fruit trees and seeds and things trying oh, to reach wow. this terribly clear cut property. Um, so, and then eventually got into making uh, herbal, herbal medicinal teas and things like that. So uh, having gardens. So plants have always been important to me, but um, bringing us to the present day, specifically what brought me uh, to this uh, collection of art um, that is now going to be at the Nanaimo Museum is uh, so working in healthcare is is challenging even without COVID but then working in long-term care during COVID was so intense you know and um, so <clears throat> to counteract the the stress you know I would go for hikes and um, being outside has always been really healing for me sitting in nature and um, in my back patio, uh, we have loads of plants. My husband's a gardener and that's also his, his pastime is making these great planters with interesting plants, but Beautiful. Um, in my little garden. But so um, during the summertime, especially, uh, it felt so good to leave this stressful work environment where we're so afraid people are gonna, again, people are gonna die. Am I gonna die? Am I gonna ring in yeah. something? And yeah. all of this stuff. And just you know, sit in the sun and hear the birds calling behind me, and look at this plant, <laughs> you know. And uh, I, there was a, a bean, I think it was a scarlet runner bean that was it was growing in like a double helix, and I felt uh, really inspired. So I grabbed a sketchbook and just started started drawing this this bean plant, and you know, I can feel the sweat going down my back, and it, just, <laughs> it felt so great to just tune out all the responsibilities yes. all the stress of the daily life and just be present in that one moment and then i look closer like oh that's interesting i didn't know they actually look like that you know and i felt so good after doing that i thought well, i should do that more often and so i i set a personal challenge to myself you know a drawing challenge for draw plan every day for 30 days and um it was it was so good it was so healing and not every sketch turn out the way I wanted it. But um, again, that's not what mattered really. Um, it was about spending the time and doing something that that felt good, that gave me a break from mm. um, other parts of my life. And then of course I was refreshed and able to then face the things in my life that I needed to do. And so gradually from those sketches, I, um, I got further and further back into art. I had really missed it. I had set it aside uh, for work and for raising children and had done more practical creative projects like sewing or crochet or, you know, making costumes still or doing volunteer projects with the, with the school designing. I, I should just say it. I was trying to summarize, but it's hard to summarize. Like we uh, uh, did a project with my daughter's class uh, where they, I gave them the challenge of designing a superhero that didn't rely on fighting yes so brilliant brilliant <laughs> it was so fun to see what they came up with um okay so that that's where my creativity went it's more into things like that and you know, hannah um and i was really missing drawing painting um that form of creativity and so when i got back into doing these plant sketches it i really felt like there I am, you know, like there's this part of myself that I had set aside to be, be practical, be, be practical and serious. And, um, and so I just kept going. I, I treated myself to some canvases and some supplies and uh, got really into the making textured canvases and then I experiment. Each one is an experiment, really. Like, what is art if not experimentation? Absolutely. You know? And it's been, it's been absolutely wonderful and um, I would like to continue with the painting and continue with mixed media uh, mixing in you know uh, currently you know I'll mix in sand from local beaches on walks and that's another way the outdoors works back into my plants and recycled paper and so again you know aspects of the environment and my personal experience coming into the work and uh, I uh, 
I have another project too with, with some really unexpected materials, including some found uh, animal bones and, and deer skulls and things where I'm layering that with the plants and oh wow check the materials I'm, I'm excited to share that as it is completed um but so um as I got more into painting the plants I was reminded of that side of myself that had made the herbal medicine for example and the side of myself that had transplanted all of the uh, the native plants and I, I thought, you know, I don't want to just try to sell, sell art. I don't want to just try to convince people to, um, to buy the art for a surface reason. Let's say that I thought, you know, I'm going to take a risk. It's really scary, but I'm going to take a risk and share more of myself that went into this. And so that is why, um, the snake plant and that series, the Wabi Sabi plants, I decided to, instead of describing, um, you know, what kind of decor it might go well with, et cetera, on the website, I would write about some of the uses and the lore around the world. And so with the snake plant, I, some things I knew and some things I did not know, it was really exciting to, to research, um, you know, the wisdom of these plants and all the uses. Um, so this, has been a way for me to combine different sides of myself absolutely share that with people and of course nervous of rejection because it's not not only is it uh putting my art out there it's putting my heart out there and yeah my, my beliefs and things that are important to me out there but i think and is the show that is the, the show that's coming up for Nanaimo Museum, I think it's March 2nd to 4th. Is that show your very first show ever? Or is this a series of shows that you've done for a while now? Uh, this is the first one in Nanaimo. Uh -huh. um, I've been in group shows in Victoria and Qualicum Beach. And then I had a, a solo show at Avril Creek Vineyard in August. It was a wonderful experience, great location. And yes. as it, out, it was the first artist to have a show there. Just no one had asked. No one had asked before. Well, and how brilliant was that? <laughs> yeah. It, but it you also talked point. about you also talked about doing a part of this larger abstract group in the States, correct? Can you say that again? The yeah, larger so yeah, you were part of a larger installation years ago in the States, was that right? Like a mural thing. Can you yeah. touch base on that a little bit? Or because from from doing that to now. I'm assuming several years later, you were saying raising kids and all of that stuff. And now you're coming back into a different sort of transitional period. You're working more specifically on your own pieces as opposed to the group. Have you, have you seen a huge difference from the way you used to be to the way you are today as it yes. relates to art? Yeah. Yeah. As far as the art. Yes. And yeah. um, I think um, I, I did more, I was going to say, I would say figurative, but not, necessarily trying to be realistic no it was i did a lot more faces faces and figures then and now i'm focusing more on some of the abstracts are, are based on landscapes or rock formations mm -hmm. um and then of course i'm really focusing on the plants right now as well so this and this the style has changed as well i use a lot more um brighter color and uh, playing around with shapes and i didn't play with textures that much before so perhaps it's the hearing loss that led me to that, but I really love the mixed media having, having oh, lots of texture. I, yeah, I, I think that it just, the, it makes it so much more dimensional. When you have, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think art in itself, whether it's a single medium used or whether or not you combine it with other things. But my personal preference is I like having those dimensions and things kind of coming out with the textures. They, 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 there seems to be, for me, for my my joy when I'm looking at paintings, um, you know, I like to see things that have, that have more modalities mixed in than just a single uh, than just a single medium. Um, I just want to kind of quickly talk a little bit about the Nanaimo Museum Art Gallery and their sh and your show coming up. What what inspired you to go to the art gallery? By the way, congratulations because that's groovy. Like, let's talk about that that new part of your of where, what not new part because you've done some shows, but here, like, tell us about that journey. Thank you for asking. I, I started talking with 
Jordan Johns, the um, the technician, uh, last last was it May or April? Um, because I learned that he he had a call out for artists for the annual Heritage Art Show, and right. the theme here was Splash of Color. And so that's how I got to know him. I did a painting for that based on, it was supposed to be all black and white grayscale with one little pop of color. That was the guideline. And um, so I did a Shack Island. Nice. Piper's Lagoon with a little orange, there's like an orangey red cabin and that was the one bit of color. And uh, so that's how we met. And I had been investigating show locations and many show locations you need to, uh, book well in advance like a yes. year in advance and um I was also I was feeling a bit shy but feeling like you know what I really want to connect with people in person not just online yeah. and I think it would be fun it would be another dimension and get a chance to meet more people in the community as well and yeah. so we started talking at that time about having um whether they whether solar show could happen there. And uh, he said that in the community gallery, which is, it's the hallway. Uh, do you know where the community gallery is? Mm -hmm, I do. The museum? Yeah, so. And, uh, and for those who don't know, I'll put it in the in the link box down on the bottom there from Nanaimo, um, uh, all, and all the information in the link box below for the Nanaimo Museum Art Gallery and that whole section there. Yeah, for sure. That's right, yes. And so for that section of the museum, um, it, there's no charge there's no charge to pop in, take a peek at that section of the yes. museum. And of course, I, I encourage everyone to look at the exhibits. Absolutely. Valuable and uh, high quality. And I learned a lot when I've gone through there. Um, but so for, if you wanted to pop in for a few minutes and take a look at the at the gallery, um, we'll have um, paintings on one wall and then the sketches that inspired them on the other wall. And there will oh, be wow. an audio tour. You can scan QR code and listen to an audio tour where I'll, I'll explain the uh, process and the meaning behind the works. And it's guided by two questions. Why plants and what does creativity have to do with facing fear? I I think that that's such a brilliant way to do an exhibit. I mean, so many people, I mean, first of all, I don't think that people really understand what a tremendous gift that it is to our community. First of all, to have incredible artists like yourself, but also to have Nanaimo Museum Art Gallery in itself. It is every single time that I've gone into that museum, I have found nothing but splendor. It is just so wonderful to take a walk and a stroll, to look at things to just breathe in and even though you might not be painting you're breathing in someone else's healing someone else's painting someone else's experience which only makes your experience while you're there even more rich so um, and combining that with an audio tour I think is just such a great idea it's it, brilliant it really I appreciate the opportunity to work with the museum there there's so many talented people it's so yeah. many knowledgeable people in our community. I'm looking forward to having the chance to get to know more of them. And I so are you fairly new to the community? Like, have you just lived here for a short period of time? How long have you been in Nanaimo? I've been in Nanaimo quite a while, actually. Um, <laughs> let's see, since 2008. Yeah. Since 2008, yeah. And uh, yeah, working, working, raising kids, you know, and um, I did one performance um, during that time, but for the most that and that was healing in itself. But so th this will be a way to relate to people in the community in a different way. Um, I, I know many wonderful people in the community and I know it, it has, it has so much, well, so much potential. There are really wonderful things happening right now. It's very everywhere, uh, all uh, over our city. DIY it's people, um, cult culture, bringing in more culture and there. I'm excited to see what happens over the next several years. And um, this, so communicating with art, uh, with art as a platform, it gives me a chance to, to talk about things I might not in my everyday and, and reach out to people and start a conversation. And um, so the museum is such a, a wonderful uh, hub, a wonderful hub, obviously, of the culture and the history. and um, of Nanaimo. And um, so that was why I asked 
asked uh, Jordan Johns if they would be open to having an art show. And I, I honestly was surprised that they said yes, because I didn't know that that was a possibility. Uh, I'm very pleased. But once again, once again, so that's at least two, maybe even three times during our time together today, where you have said, I just needed to ask. Like, talk about stepping out and getting out of your own way. Like, people, we all tend to get in our own way all the, I mean, for all kinds of reasons. I know certainly COVID really kept people at a distance. They didn't want to, you know, they kind of honed in and sort of were, were cocooning to a certain extent and maybe even perfecting some of their, I know some of the artists that I know have said that for them, it was one of the most inspiring periods of time because they were unencumbered by time. They could do as they needed to do in a way that was really fulfilling for them. And they didn't feel like they were taking away anything else from their lives. They were in fact, just sort of like, the, you know, it kind of reminds me of when we first um, sort of shut down the city, right. For like that two and a half months, I didn't shut down and the people I worked with didn't shut down. We were essential services. And so I, I, we got sped up. We didn't slow down, but a lot of the people that I know were able to actually step back a little bit and take a breath and nature started to come back to us. We started to see wildlife back on the street. We started to see like all kind, like the world just started to look a lot more peaceful and comfortable despite and in spite of fear. And so I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that people are now coming back out again. I hope one of the first things they do is come out to see your show. Uh, is there admission to get into the, to see it or this is the free, um, walk through it's free walk through yes and yeah exactly I, I would love to comment on what you were just saying about Please. during covid how even amid the fear uh nature and life was coming back and um that was the inspiration behind a lot of the works in the show and also um part of the meaning behind um the show and trying to have a show in general is how we all have this connection to nature and we yes. all have this drive to um, to connect with with nature and each other. And uh, plants are really I'm having a little trouble putting this into words, um, but plants are kind of a, a connecting factor for us, you know, and so that's why I called the show plants for the people. It's us connecting with plants, you know, in your your personal life, your memories, your your favorite tree that you climbed as a kid, the snake plant in your house. Um, going for a walk and you see your favorite tree you know um plants are important to our lives and they're they are life they're nourishment they're healing and and it is also the artwork that i've created that is about plants me offering it up to people saying um this is what i'm about i would love to connect with you <laughs> yeah so we can start a conversation you know yeah, I, I think that that really you're absolutely right. When I think about plants, house plants or plants from outside, um, I know that they bring oxygen into our lungs, right? They bring, they take all the toxicity away by just being present, by being with them. Um, I know one of the things that for a lot of people that they find it gives them so much more inspiration is being, you know, outside under the cedar trees, in with the firs, over by the walks, in our beautiful parks. And that has kept most people sane, but being able to take that piece and then translate it to canvas and translate the feeling, the the healing, the growth, all of those things into that medium, I think is really where people like yourself and, you know, God bless you that you can do that. I am not talented in that way in any way, but I sure appreciate other people's talent, right? It's like, there's something to be said by breathing in work. And, and we need that. We need that in our world today more than ever. Um, I'm curious whether or not we talked a lot about that particular, I think it was called the I'm going to say it wrong. I know I will. Malagro abstract, the heart that you said about the beads. Will that be at the installation as well? This will not be at the installation. And I, I started to screen myself thinking, should I be talking about a different plant that's actually going to be there? And there, there is a painting that is related to facing fear yeah. that is going to be there. So the Malagro is not going to be, um, that's actually, it's been sold. It's in Arizona. Um, oh, wow. It was, it was um, the per person who, 
uh, collected it, as you can imagine. They felt a personal connection because of some uh, difficulties they've been going through. And uh, it really, it really spoke to them. Um, I'm so, so glad. Be, there, yeah. But, yeah, I, I'm so glad that you sell your art as well. So I think that's important that people say, right, that, that you know, I, I know parting with artwork can't be easy for you. Um, I'm sorry, sorry. Can you say that again? Yeah, I can. Um, is parting, I should make it more of a question than is, an is assumption, parting is parting with your artwork hard for you? Like, It, it is challenging. And in some pieces, I, I wonder... Am I ever gonna sell? It? Am I gonna? What if somebody yeah, wants to yeah. buy it? Am I gonna sell totally. it? Should I put it on my website? Mm, I don't know. And and so um, it can be difficult. And there are a couple of sketches. There's a sketch that will be in the show that I think that it's kind of started. It started everything in a way. And so I, it's very special to me. I have so many memories tied around it that things like that I will I will keep. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, There's some that you just have to hold on to. Yeah. Sure. But um, so one of the paintings that will be there um, that's related to facing fear and I originally was not going to offer it for sale, but it is it is available for sale. Um, it's uh, Magnolia Faces the Sun and it's uh, 36 by 48. And um, I <laughs> I go into this in the in the audio tour, so I don't want to spoil it. Of I course, get into listen to the audio tour because then it's like us together, um, me explaining the stories behind things. Um, but in summary, it's it was um, intimidating to me to tackle a, a big canvas, and I put it off for so long. And then I, once I started, it became a little bit easier. But each step, I would I would um, question myself, like oh. Am I going to ruin it? You know, and, <laughs> I and, get it. So it was such a great exercise in just letting myself mm. relax, letting myself experiment and um, push myself to try new things, you know, push, push the comfort zone, see what happens and enjoy the process, you know. Well, you know, it's been just such a delight to have you on the program today. I really am so glad, Nanette, that you were able to join us for this episode of Act 3 on CHLY 101.7. A little while ago, we told people to go get a piece of paper and a pen so that they could write down uh, your information. If they're able to go to Nanaimo Museum Art Gallery from March 2nd to 4th, that's a great place to start. But if they want to see some of your work right after our conversation, how can they find you? You. best place is to head to my website it's my name.com so nanette moss.com and that is n-a-n-e-t-t-e-m-o-s-s.com and please contact me with any questions you may have and, and if you have the opportunity to take a look at my blogs i do put a lot of effort into my blogs and, and make an effort to explain where I'm coming from and make it interesting and make it fun and inspiring. So I uh, hope you have the opportunity to take a look there. Well, I hope everybody who's listening to this absolutely takes you up on that offer to go check you out on your website. That's NanetteMoss.com. Um, and to go see her show on the Nanaimo Museum Art Gallery this March 2nd to 4th. It'll so be worth your while. We're at the time of the show. Unfortunately, I can't believe an hour is already up. We're already through most of the time together already. So I only have about a minute or so left. But I just wonder, you know, if you had a takeaway that you wanted our community to understand or think about as we close off today's broadcast, what do you think that would look like for you? I would like to encourage everyone to pull out that creative project that you really want to do and allow yourself to enjoy life. Allow yourself to enjoy that moment. Trust yourself in your creative project. And that will yeah. have a positive effect on the rest of your life. Absolutely. It will have a positive effect for the rest of your life. And arguably, it's certainly given you an incredible form to be able to share your innermost self. And thank you for your vulnerability, your kindness, your expression. I really appreciate you sharing your time on this program today. I know you're going to inspire a lot of people out there to get out of their own way and to do some great work for themselves by pulling out their paintbrush or their art project or whatever it is and just beginning. 
Once again, you've tuned in. Thanks so much for being with us today on Act 3 CHLY 101.7 FM. We will see you next time. In the meantime, have yourself a great day. Thanks so much, Nanette. Bye for now. Thank you.